Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Inman, and you're now listening to the Word of Deliverance. Thank you so much for tuning in to our program today. I've got Michelle Patton with us. She's the host of our program today. And um, we got some really great things in the Scriptures. Michelle, I understand how there's a famine in the land that you've brought out very well. And you see it in a lot of things that's happening today. But the paradigm, people have learned by listening to look at the gospel as another way uh, opposed to the way that we've always looked at it. We've always looked at the gospel of suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, people that would deny themselves daily, taking up their cross and follow God. That they wouldn't go along with the world. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you find out today they're talking about something totally different. You know, giving you what you want. You know, and making you to be a happy, rich person. And uh, these kind of things, but really when you look down through the years, that's the opposite of what we have always preached. Yes. You know, we look at the life of suffering, and I believe because of this uh, being the opposite of the gospel of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that people are going to churches today and that are not really saved. Yes. I see people that have never shed a tear in their repentance. Mm -hmm. And I... I think it's real sad today that we live in this kind of world where the gospel has been twisted totally opposite and people don't even know what it's all about. Right. Give us a little bit of feedback here and let's take the people into your program and uh, how we're going to show them these things that are so important. Right. Well, they have turned our gospel scheme and especially with the, even with repentance, some of them don't even mention it. And if they do mention it, they twist it up to make you say, oh, you just confess your sins to God, and then you're okay. You know, just confess, and he'll forgive you. It's not about turning away, or they don't mention the definition of a true repented heart. So therefore, people are becoming religious, and they're not getting in covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I don't think they hear the word covenant very much in... Uh in this gospel in this day and time. Mm -hmm. But we brought out on a program this week that you can't be saved without making a covenant. Right. But the problem is that you cannot repent unless you agree to the Bible being your guidelines. Mm -hmm. You must agree that you will stay with every scripture. And if you don't know them, then you're agreeing to them anyway. Right. That as you learn them from the Holy Ghost, you will obey. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you have to know every Bible scripture to be saved, but I'm saying you have to give yourself to God, and when he shows you something, you've got to be obedient, right? Right. So now, uh, we find out that also the word repent has a word in it that can give people a little bit of an idea. I was telling you a while ago that in our churches, I remember the time when you never saw a tear out of some people. They never shed a tear. Mm -hmm. They never had any remorse. You know, you never saw it out of them. But should people, should we see as Christians something in new converts yes. like tears? Yes. Tell us about that. Well, the Bible talks about how repentance talks about um, feeling morally to feel compunction. And that word compunction is talking about um, a sting of conscience or something that, a grief that is painful and, and, and we know that in Acts chapter 2, when Paul, Peter had preached to the Israelites and told them that they had crucified their Lord Jesus, it says in verse 37 how they were pricked at their hearts. And that word, and it talks about how, the, and they said unto Peter, what shall we do? You know, they were pricked, they were grieved, and they were very sorrowful. And the Bible talks about even in Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, how godly sorrow worketh repentance. And that word repentance also talks about uh, a change of mind or direction of thoughts. But it also uses the word poignant. Yes. And it's painfully. Yes, something Some, that's piercing. Yes, whenever I got saved, I cried for three days. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't help it. I cried for three days. It came to me that I didn't know why Jesus even loved somebody like me. Right. I didn't know why God would love me. I wasn't worth loving. I knew that. And when I found out he loved me, it hurt me that much more. Mm -hmm. And I cried and I wept and I cried. Mm -hmm. 
So these people that are not having any tears and they just go to church and all of this, are they really saved? No. It's kind of, I mean, we can't really, you know, say it to know that we're God or anything. Right. But let's just say it this way. It don't fit into the poignant uh, thing when it comes to repentance yes. and how you see they were pricked in their heart. Right. So this talks about something that hurt them in their heart. Right. So you find out that in Acts chapter 2, verses 41 I found this was important, too. Tell us what the word gladly, those that gladly receive the word, mm -hmm. because you find out that there's two things that you actually have to, <clears throat> I guess, buy into the ideal of Jesus going to make you a great person in the world to come. Yes. And you've got to actually be glad about the gospel, which is guaranteed to change your life if you listen. Right. And the fact that they... They were pricked at their hearts, and when Peter had told them to repent and be ye baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, he offered a way out. Jesus, hey, if you repent and turn, dip, turn from your evil ways, then guess what? Jesus will forgive you of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And therefore, they were gladly received it. And that word gladly is uh, 780 in your strongs, and it's talk about with pleasure. With pleasure. People yes. should love the word of God. Mm -hmm. And you look in the Old Testament, Michelle, that they complained from day one. Right. Whenever they came out of Egypt, all they did was complain, mm -hmm. complain, complain. Three days into the wilderness, they were already complaining, mm -hmm. you know, to God. But we find out that a lot of people today will gladly receive the Lord if they knew more about the gospel. Right. Because many people go to churches today, they don't know anything about repenting. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are hearing things that are so weird that they if they had tried that in some of the churches, you know, that, uh, I mean, they just, the devil knows where to try that stuff at. Some right. of the stuff he's doing today, mm -hmm. causing people to believe on things that's not even in our Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, getting people to believe on these preachers that are not even talking about you know, uh, healing the sick, you know, casting out a devil, preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't, if people don't receive what I said, they hated Jesus before they hated me. Right. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and preach the Bible because that's what the Lord said. And he said this in John 20, 21, when he told the disciples, as my father has sent me, so send I you. Right. And this is what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to preach the gospel. We're supposed to be instant in season, out of season, mm -hmm. reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine because the time has come now that we're living in. People are waiting for the great falling away. Right. They better wake up. Mm -hmm. We have been in that now. We're already in it. We're already deeply into yes. it, and people have no idea that the one world church is not only on the rise, mm -hmm. but I preached it and brought it out in our service the other day. TBN is the mother of the one world church. Yes. They've been bringing out every, anything they want to bring out. They can bring it out, and they don't have to answer to anybody. They just go on doing what they're doing, playing like it never happened, but they keep getting these ideas into the minds of people slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it goes back to Paul Crouch when he when he had the, the popes and people like that on his program. Some back in the day, I remember some of those people that was high up in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. But the ideal is that they're not Christians. Right. They don't even claim to be Christians. Mm -hmm. You can't be a Catholic Christian. That's like mm -hmm. saying, I'm a stupid smart. <laughs> yeah. I'm smart stupid. You know, it's an oxymoron. You can't mix them. Right. You either come out of the Catholic Church, which is the church of the whole world, mm -hmm. or you'll perish with them. Right. So, you know, they had this on there. Then they have the rabbi on there selling his prayer shawls. And then they had the people on there like Creflo Dollar saying that Jesus is not God or he wouldn't have been in the back of the boat asleep. Yeah. Then you've got the psychiatrist on there with Joel Osteen. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the people like T.D. D. Jakes that tells Oprah, yes, Oprah, there's many ways to God because there's many people. And then you've got John Hagee. He wants to lift up Israel and the Jews and their prayer shawl mm -hmm. and sell you a prayer shawl and tell you, you don't need the Holy Ghost anymore. i show you this covenant of the prayer shawl. Well, it's all about pleasure. And that that's the second level root word to that word gladly tells you the opposite of those that don't like the word of God, those 
They love the pleasures of sin and the lust. And it talks about, it's 2237 in your Greek <coughs> Strong's Concordance, and it says to please, delight, desire, lust, and pleasure. And it's the word for hedone. And it's like an extreme pleasure to just please yourself in any way well, you can. Well, that's what everybody's into today. Mm -hmm. They want the newest car. You take these young kids today. We just heard Sunday, I think it was, that we have one young man that uh, he didn't come to this church or anything, but he goes out in an automobile. And these young guys go out and buy these fast cars, and he runs his car with these other guys, and he was drinking. They found the bottle of whiskey in his car, and one had, fly, had come out of the car with a telephone pole, and he's dead. You know, where he's racing his car with these other young kids. Mm -hmm. You know, that goes back to when I was a kid 60 years ago. They are doing the same thing. Right. You know, so you look at the other girl. She was drinking, and she hit something, and now she's in the hospital with her neck broke. It's all happened over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And she's in the hospital with her neck broke, and I don't know what's going to be the end of her. She's going to die or not. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea is that people are going to extremes looking for pleasure in the wrong places. Yes. And the very idea of this demonic lifestyle they've got comes from lust. Yes. Now, we want to tell the people, Jesus told them that they were of their father, the devil, in John chapter 8. Verse 44. And he said, the lust of your father you will do, mm -hmm. because people can't get out of it. You are what you are. Amen. But we know that this pleasure that they're looking for is not the gospel scheme. Right. So we want to preach the word to you today that you can, and there's people struggling for life now. They don't know what to do. Their, their lives are turned around. Mm -hmm. I want you to try to help the, help the people to know, can they quit what they're doing? Can they turn around? And can they start enjoying life? Yes, they can if they get in covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ and repent. The only way that you can get in covenant is by hearing the organic gospel. And when God, God is knocking on your door, it talks about godly sorrow leadeth to repentance. So when you feel that sorrow in your heart, it's up to you to repent and say, okay, God, everything that you said in your word, I will do and be obedient. Then he sprinkles you with his blood and your conscience, therefore, comes alive and you're able to serve the living God. So you have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that yes. he will exalt you in due time. Amen. He said in John 13 when he was telling the disciples to wash one another's feet mm -hmm. that they were supposed to humble themselves. Yes. And he said in that very same chapter, he said, happy are ye if you do these things. Amen. Lust is the primary, it's the primary weapon that Satan uses to destroy people. Yes, James chapter 4 is a good um verse about this it says from whence come wars and fightings among you come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members and that's the lust the head and a and he says you lust and have not you kill and desire to have it cannot obtain you fight and war and you have not because you ask not you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust again that head and a and then he goes and says in verse 4 and says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. And whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the in an enmity of God. Now why would he say being friend of the world or call, calling them, um, yeah, the friend from, of the world and go from lust to the friends of the world? Well, what does John, First John say, all that it is in the world is the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Well, you find out that Paul made a great example in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Yes. I look at people today that don't understand their problem. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to get rid of alcohol. They don't know how to get rid of fornication. They don't know how to be nice to their mate. They don't know how to be what they really want to be in their heart, but they don't have the power to do it. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a young man, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I thought maybe I just hadn't grown up. I kept telling God, God, I wish I would hurry and grow up and get rid of all of this stuff out of my life. Right. But it was actually the lust that was in me, and I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I want you to tell the people today in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, if people repent and give their life to God and get in covenant with the Lord Jesus, they will make decisions that they've never made before, and they will find out that they have the power in their life to keep their word to God. Yes. 
People today don't understand this very much, but there is a power that is greater than your lust, and it will keep the lust dead. Yes. Chapter 3, verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and being made conformable unto his death. Okay, being made conformable unto his death. In other words, this is what the Holy Ghost does. According to Matthew 3.10, mm -hmm. this is what John the Baptist said. He will baptize you the Holy Ghost in fire, but he will burn the chaff with his fire. Yes. And he will gather the wheat into his garner. So the chaff is all the things of the flesh. Right. So this Philippians 3.10 you brought out means that the whole work of God is is to get this lust dead mm -hmm. so that you can serve God. Yes, and because he was being conformed unto the death of Jesus Christ in Philippians 4.11, now he can say, I have learned in whatsoever state that I am in to be content. And then he also says in uh, Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse 19, of how my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In verse 13, he says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So I like the way you brought this out. Once he is bringing his life to subjection of the Holy Spirit. Yes. He's been made conformable, conformable unto the death of Jesus. And this is what it talks about. We're baptized into his death. Amen. The death of Jesus is working in every person. Mm -hmm. But Galatians 6, 16 says that the, the flesh lusts against the spirit, and wow. the spirit of God lusts against the flesh. Amen. So uh, the spirit of God wars against the lust of the flesh, is yes. what I meant to say. So we are having problems today because people do not know where their problems is coming from. They're attending these churches. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about repentance. They don't talk about being born again. And you know they're turning their children over to the world. Amen. And I look at people today that don't even understand what it means to be born again. Amen. I want you to take us, if you would, I mean, Philippians 3.10, it has, okay, let's tell them about the very verse here that says, I counted all things for a loss. Yes. Okay, this is important, too, because if people want to cut off lust, tell us about the pride of life. The pride of life will send you to hell. Okay, let's talk about the pride of life for one second. Mm -hmm. As a lady invited our, our, our friend out to her house that she recently bought and oh come on out we got 27 acres and this and that this is all the pride of life mm -hmm. it's all a, a illusion that you own something right it's like buying a house in america and owning this lifetime of interest rate you're paying on the house mm -hmm. but yet telling your neighbor oh yeah i own this this is my property right or even it could go for you're the greatest ethnic group oh yes i'm just so great that's the pride of life too yeah it's all into this mm -hmm. but you know the idea here that paul said i counted all things for a loss yes i don't care about this world he says in in this first first timothy six you know, naked we come into this world, and naked we're going to leave. Amen. So you can't take anything out of this world with you. Right. So common sense tells you that people talk about great gain as godliness. They're a fool. Yes. There's no such thing as great gain like monetary things and right. materialism and money being a great gain. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Those things are so short-lived that it's not worthy to talk about. Amen. But the illusion that they give people keeps them into their lust because lust is never satisfied. Right. Lust is never really willing to give up on things. You can't fulfill it. You can't fulfill it mm -hmm. because, you know, you're lusting after the world. Right. And John warns them in 1 John chapter 2. He said all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh. Yes. The lust of the eyes and pride of life. Now, many today cannot be faithful to their wife. They can't quit drinking alcohol. Some of them can't quit gambling. They'll go get a, a, a buy a lotto ticket and give their money to these idiots that want to take their money and make them think, oh, you've got a chance to be a billionaire. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, that's really crazy. But anyway, Philippians 3.10, or tell them about this before that, how he counted all things for a loss yes. for all of his worldly fame. It says that he had a lot to glory in in his flesh. Verse 5 
through 6, he says, I have a lot to glory in. He says, I was circumcised on the eighth day. I was a stock of Israel. I was a tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law, I was a Pharisee. He says, concerning zeal, I was persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which was in the law, blameless. He says, but what things, in verse 7, were gained to me, those things I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Okay, does he relate this to Matthew chapter 13, where he talks about the cares of the world? Yes. Come in and choke the word of God, and you bear no fruit. Right. So I look at people today that get so entangled in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, they're so wanting to come up in the world. I heard a guy the other day say, oh, yeah, I got a job promotion, so I got to go to another state. Mm -hmm. But he claimed to be a Christian, and so maybe he's a born-again Christian. Maybe that's God's will for him. I don't know. But normally I would like, you know, I mean, maybe he had already prayed about it and God gave him an answer. Mm -hmm. But I look at people today that, you know, it's so hard to serve the world, to serve one master and love another. Right. Even though I know that God can move people and things like this, I'm not saying he can't. But let's go into the scriptures now and let's tell the people about a real true covenant with Jesus Christ and how they can get this lust out of their life yes. and how they can have the God nature. I want to bring it out one more time about Second Peter while you're looking this up. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4 and verse 3. That's chapter 1 verses 4 and verse 3 in Second Peter. Because it talks about that the divine nature, which is the God nature, helps you to escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. Amen. Corruption, all the corruption, every bit of the corruption is in the world is through lust. That's yes. the devil. Amen. That's what causes wars, hates, crimes, propaganda, rape, robbery, murder. Everything is behind that. Amen. And it's never satisfied. It always wants more. Mm -hmm. This is why these people are still collecting all of this money today, thinking they're going to really have something, hundreds of millions of dollars, and oh, yes, they're Christians. You know, like a fish in a pickle dish. They're not Christians. Right. That's the profile of the devil. Amen. But anyhow, you find out that we're struggling with things along this line. Go ahead, tell us. I like to at. read that Second Peter one, three, four. It says, "According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that have called us to glory and virtue." And remember, Paul said, "I count all things lost that I might have that knowledge." So this power is in them to get yes. rid of the corruption that's in the world through lust. Yes. And it's called the divine nature. Is that right? Yes, it is. It says, whereby given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the okay, world. Okay, let's talk about the dangers of the one world church rising. And it's rising in the hearts of people today with this ideal that don't judge nobody, don't condemn nobody, don't say that somebody's wrong. You know, if you judge that, God's going to judge you. The truth is, that we have a gift of the Holy Ghost that help us to know right from wrong. And mm -hmm. if you don't learn to judge by the Holy Ghost, you can't go to heaven. Right. This is a real trick of the devil to get people to stay in sin. Because mm -hmm. sin nature will cry out and say, have mercy on me. I'm not going to judge nobody else. Right. Maybe God will forgive me for mine. But that's not the idea of the way it works. Tell them what this means in Hebrews chapter 9, we bring this out. I want to get it into the hearts of every person. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 14 and 15. I want you to talk about the inher in eternal inheritance of great wealth and great riches for people that will allow God to sprinkle them with the precious royal blood and how that comes about. Right. Once you get in covenant with Jesus Christ and you agree to obey him and his word, then it says in verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, because of this, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance inheritance though eternal inheritance comes for those that will have eternal life 
And you mentioned about having our conscience sprinkled from dead works. Yes. In other words, our conscience will become to a higher level of life. Yes. We will know more things than any mm -hmm. normal person mm -hmm. that keeps us out of sin. This right. is why they can't relate to Christians, mm -hmm. because we have a deeper insight into sin than they do. Right, and it's the Spirit is working with your conscience, and it, it tugs on your conscience when you're doing something wrong, like, uh-oh, warning, you better stop what you're doing. And it helps you to realize where you're going. Now, the danger is when you override your conscience, yes. you can sear your conscience as a hot iron. Yes. And you won't know right from wrong. Amen. You can become reprobated in your mind. Right. But let's talk about for the people now that want to get rid of this lust nature in their life. Mm -hmm. Tell them about verse 20. Verse 20. And this is Hebrews chapter 9. Yes. This saying this. This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined. And that's the royal Jesus. blood of Jesus. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Once you um, agree to the word, he enjoins you to the, book, to the book, to the word of God. In other words, if you agree to the book, yes. then you can be sprinkled with the royal blood. Mm -hmm. You can have this new conscience, and your names will be written in the book of life, and God will give you a power to walk up right before him. Yes, that's why in Acts chapter eight, uh, 2, verse 38, Peter says, To repent and be ye baptized, every one in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the gift of the Holy Ghost is where you get all of the supernatural powers from. Right. In your knowledge, in your wisdom, mm -hmm. in your walk with God. He talks about in John chapter 1, as many as received me, Gave me him the power to become the sons of God. Amen. And I think people today need to know how precious faith is. It and is. faith only comes by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Is there anything possible that an unsaved person can have faith? No, an unsaved person cannot have faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Where does it come from initially? It comes from the word. But it comes from the Holy Ghost bringing yes. faith into your life when right. you repent. Yes. If you don't repent, you can have the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. and that's the producer of your faith. Amen. He comes to you, convicts you of your sin, and if you say, yes, Lord, he will bring that faith into your life and mm -hmm. cause you to be a great person. Amen. And once you have repented and got in covenant with Jesus Christ, now it's up to you to build upon that. And that's why he says in Jude, verse 20, he says to build up your most holy faith in the Holy Ghost, praying always. Okay, I want to encourage you to ask God to come into your life now and tell him, Lord, I will obey every bit of our Bible. As you show it to me, I will obey it. I will obey every scripture. Join me, Father, to your book. I want to be a royal person, and I want to have this extraordinary power. I'm tired of my life going in the wrong direction. Lord, I want lust out of me. Tell him right now, Father, kill the lust that's within me, and I will obey you in the name of Jesus, Father. I come to you now pleading for mercy. If you say that prayer, I believe right now God will write your name in his book, and he will open that book at the end of time. And I think you'll be a royal person and you'll be in a family of God with eternal life and you'll be eternally rich. My name is Pastor Inman. I want you to get a pencil. I'd like to hear your testimony. I'd like for you to write to me and Michelle. You can write to Pastor Inman, I-N-M-A-N. -N, or you can write to Michelle, P-A-T-T-O-N, Michelle Patton, at 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue. Dayton, Ohio, 45404. You can write to Brother Inman, I-N-M-A-N, you spell my name, and that's 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue. Or you can write to Michelle Patton, and that's Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, Patton, P-A-T-T-O-N, 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. You could even email me at pastorinman at att.net. Very simple. You could call me at 937-235-0246. I'd really like to hear from you. I'd like to put your name in our midnight prayer box we always use. We love you, and I want to thank you for listening to our program. Remember, 
there's a great day coming when we'll be before the judgment seat of Christ and we'll get all of our rewards for serving him. Have a great day. You've been listening to the Word of Deliverance. Thank you.